see if this works. Uh, hey, it looks like it worked. Got a little remote control. I'm Dave, and uh, usually, as you know, these are seaside chats. We had a, a bit of a situation with the weather. The last few days, every day, I've meant to uh, shoot this video, but uh, we had, uh, I heard on the news several times the phrase, hurricane force winds. So uh, there wasn't a video shot down by the sea, and then the rain was torrential. Here we are, uh, May, May 19th, and the weather has been uh, remarkably cool up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and rainy and windy. So anyhow, um, I'm, I, I found um, a lake spot, uh, which there's, can you hear that? A little creek running by? I don't know how, if the microphone's picking that up. But nonetheless, a little creek, it's quiet. Um, it snowed last night, it's, it's cold. Um, so anyhow, I'm here to talk about, uh, you might know this, I don't know. Um, we're coming to the end of the 50th anniversary two-month run of the Europe 72 tour and uh, the tour ran from April 7th of 72 right up until May 26th and we've been celebrating it throughout the I mean so far all 2022 and we'll continue to do so we've actually got some some things up our sleeve for later in the year but we'll get to that um, well later in the year but for now I'm here to talk about um, the uh, vinyl box set, the 24 LP box set from the Lyceum shows. So as you probably know, the tour was, uh, it was grueling, but at the same time, they had quite a bit of time off sometimes between shows. Um, even the West German shows in the middle of the tour, um, there were, at one point, there were three nights off from two cities that were only like a couple hours away on the train, uh, a couple hours, Frankfurt and Hamburg. Um, but at the end of the tour, now, oftentimes, uh, end of a tour, and I can think of a lot of examples of this, uh, you know, touring is grueling work. And so at the end of a tour, you've got a bit of fatigue setting. And I can think of lots of examples where that's not the case. Uh, spring 77 is a great example where Baltimore, Richmond, and Hartford that ended that uh, six-week tour, five-week tour, um, I think that three-night run is just as good as any three-night run uh, on that tour. Uh, they certainly weren't fatigued, but again, it came on the heels of three days off. The last show before um, Richmond on May 25th of 1977 was in Florida, in uh, Pembroke Pines on, on May 22nd. So they had three nights off to kind of rest a little bit. Same thing kind of happened in Europe, where the end of the tour, where you'd think Europe 72 of the Dead's first big tour, first tour of Europe, uh, not big tour, first tour of Europe, uh, you would think the fatigue would set in but they had five nights off. The previous show uh, was uh, 50 years ago yesterday from when I'm taping this. So uh, May 18th in Munich, West Germany. And you know, conceptually Munich, West Germany to London, it's a huge, big concept far away. But you know, Europe's not that big comparative to the United States. So it's not that far to get to. I mean, it was a day of travel. Remember they were ferrying and busing. They certainly were not uh, flying 50 people, 50 plus people around. So. Uh, but the, nonetheless, they had five days off before the London shows. And the tour was, as you might know, originally scheduled to open at a theater, at the Rainbow Theater, but it closed before the tour. So they opened at Wembley Arena, but they did end up closing the tour with four nights. Instead of four nights opening at the Rainbow, it was four nights closing at the Lyceum, which the Lyceum is an even nicer theater, much nicer. Um, Rainbow's fine, but the Lyceum is special. Um, so they get there, no fatigue, recording all of the shows, playing, I think, better or more consistently better than they ever had, in maybe my opinion. Um, their good friends, the New Riders of the Purple Sage, were there uh, to open up the shows. They had joined them for the Bickershaw Festival on uh, May 7th, uh, two weeks earlier. Um, and then they joined up again for the four nights at the Lyceum. So it was kind of an old home week, like a party. And the London fans, you know, who had now seen them uh, with the two shows in Wembley to open at the beginning and then maybe some Newcastle people and then the Bickershaw people. Um, so, I mean, it was, I think it was celebratory. And, you know, with the Europe 72 tour, usually when it's the 50th anniversary or something big like that, we like to have something new and special. Uh, but because we already released the box set in 2011 and every note from the tour that was recorded, we didn't have that this time um, in terms of new stuff. So what we've done is got very, I think, very creative and listened to what you've wanted and what you're interested in. And one of those things is more vinyl. So amongst the many things we've done, uh, we uh, started out with the Record Store Day release of the April 8th show, the second show of the tour in Wembley. 
Um, and then we've got this and then like I said, we might have something later in the year. I'm not certain about that, but I think there's something else gonna, going to happen uh, because Europe 72 is something that should be celebrated through the year. 50 years since uh, a magnificent moment in Grateful Dead history. If you've been following Rich and Jesse's uh, Grateful Dead Deadcast, Gr Grateful Deadcast, I don't, know if, I don't know if this microphone picks that up, some construction across this little lake here. Um, they've been following the tour with some great stories by band, uh, crew, Deadheads from Europe who saw the shows. I mean, it, it's a really wonderful thing. It gives you the full context. So I would, I would definitely recommend you listen to that and then listen to as much Europe 72 music as you can. So what we've done is we've taken Jeffrey Norman's 2011 mixes that he, Jeffrey Norman holed up at Prairie Sun Recording Studios in Sonoma County, beautiful place. It's in farmland in Sonoma. I visited him there several times during that project 11 years ago. And it really is a, a wonderful place. So Jeffrey holed up there for six or eight months and mixed the entire tour, all 73 CDs, 22 shows. And then Dave Glasser did the mastering back then for the CD box set. Um, Dave Glasser is, has been involved again, obviously, in uh, the vinyl release of this, where he's taken Jeffrey's mixes and mastered them specifically for vinyl and uh, with proper fades out and everything, side splits, everything, and it sounds better than it ever has. I've now listened to the, uh, the 24 LPs in the proofing process of the, the white label, the test pressings. I've now listened to them twice fully through, and then, I mean, dozens of times in the past few months, I've put on a side or a few sides or a full show. So uh, I've become very familiar with what these uh, vinyl pressings sound like, as has Dave fully, obviously, we, um, I don't think we had any, oh no, there was there were issues with a couple of the, the sides that we requested uh, a repress, which they do very quickly, and then we listen and approve those. Um, it sounds wonderful, it really sounds magnificent. The bottom end is right there. Um, the mixes, again, are the same as Jeffrey Norman's 2011 mixes, which means they're from the multi-tracks, these aren't two-track recordings. So they sound, uh, one, the mixes sound wonderful, um, and the mastering is updated to 2022 mastering standards uh, by our good friend Dave. Um, a couple of the shows ended on um, odd number sides, uh, you know, if it was you know, 11 sides instead of 12. So what we've done with two of the sides of these 24 LPs, they're etched. And if you've never seen an etching on a vinyl, on, a, on an LP, the, uh, the new um, uh, Dave's Picks Volume 1, uh, from um, the mosque in Richmond 1977 it has an etching if you want to check that out but uh, they are really what they can do with etching I mean I never knew they could do this until a couple of years ago um, is really really wonderful Oh, a, a dog's coming in he's got a nice little ball um, I think he wants to come play with me um, hi bud oh am I supposed to throw this I guess so here you go, here you go buddy here you go oh there you go um, sorry I got a nice dog here um, oh, there he goes. Um, I used to get a lot of dogs in my videos. Um, so anyhow, uh, it's limited to uh, 4,000 units, I believe. And from what I heard, I haven't heard any numbers in, in a month, um, but it was selling very well. So the whole point of this video is to tell you that 50 years ago now, this week, um, the dead end of the Europe 72 tour with four nights at the Lyceum, uh, which are now being released on vinyl exclusively at dead.net. And... I mean, we're all deadheads. We're collectors. I'm, I certainly am. And the deadhead things that I do collect, uh, CDs, vinyl, uh, cool merchandise, posters, um, all the stuff that has ever been released by the dead. Going back, I mean, I bought the first Dave's Picks in 1993. I bought one from the vault in 91, uh, two from the vault in 93, etc., etc. And I still have those. And so by doing such a wonderful package, and it is a beautiful package, it's what you'd expect from a 24 LP massive box set, vinyl box set by the Grateful Dead. It really is a wonderful thing. It's the kind of thing that I personally am going to want on my shelf for the next, well, I'm 51 now, so hopefully the next 50 years, I don't know. But, um, you know, if not me, it'll go to somebody um, who will appreciate it for sure, because um, that's kind of why we do the quality we do, and it's why we, you know, put so much work into everything we do, because these are collectibles. But point is, um, I always have a point. It takes me a while to get there, but I have one. Um, what I heard a month ago is that it was selling very well. 
So I'm here to say if you're interested in getting it, uh, pick it up because it's going to be gone sooner than later probably. Um, I don't know what number it's at, but it's uh, sold very well. Um, I should also point out, for those who don't want 24 LPs, I don't know why you wouldn't, but some people don't. Um, the final night of the, of the tour, of the run and the tour, May 26th, one of the most famous nights in dead history. If you have the original Europe 72 record, side five and six, uh, trucking, uh, epilogue, prelude, morning dew. That's from the May 26th show amongst much other great music, including Pigpen's final show at which he sang. He played one more show at the Hollywood Bowl three weeks later on uh, June 17th, but he didn't sing anything. He played a little bit of organ. I've seen pictures recently. He didn't look great. Um, so he took time off and he never came back uh, as a touring member of the Grateful Dead um, and then passed away in March of 1973. Um, so, um, there's a lot of pig pen on that show. There's a lot of pig pen in this box set, including the final, well, obviously the final versions of all of this great pig pen material, Chinatown Shuffle and Mr. Charlie and Turn On Your Love Light and Good Lovin', uh, The Stranger, Two Souls and Communion and on and on. So, um, do check it out. Uh, it's really wonderful. Um, again, the final night has been released on, is being released, is released now on CD. I think it's pre-order. I think it comes out in a month or two, uh, as does the vinyl box. I think it... I think it'll ship to you in July, but it's all on dead.net. Uh, I'm the message guy, I'm not the detail guy. I, I am the detail guy, but not when it comes to that. I don't know. Um, but do check it out. So thanks for listening. Uh, I was supposed to make this short, uh, and I see we're above 11 minutes. Uh, sorry, Lauren. Um, by the way, thanks to everyone at Rhino for doing such a great job with celebrating the Dead's 50th anniversary. And thanks for coming along for the ride, everybody watching. Uh, like I say, we're going to continue to celebrate throughout uh, 2022. And remember, 2023, the 50th anniversary of 1973, I won't say anything else, but I'll say there, a lot went on in the Grateful Dead world in 1973 um, that I'm sure we'll be celebrating next year as well. We got a lot of celebration over the next decade or two, actually. So um, we love 50th anniversaries. I mean, I never really did until I turned 50. I was like, oh gosh, that's a milestone. Made it. Um, so thanks for joining us. Sorry about the um, not, uh, not seaside, but uh, you wouldn't have wanted to see it. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't have heard it. Anything. The camera would have blown over, and the rain would have destroyed the camera. So you have it. So thanks for joining. I'm going to turn the camera off with my little remote control. And uh, again, head to dead.net. 24 LP box set of the Lyceum 1972, all four nights that ended the Europe 72 tour. Remastered by Dave Glasser, mixed by Jeffrey Norman back in 2011. Remastered now in 2020. Well, late 2021 into 2022. Um, dynamite stuff, uh, really do please uh, check it out because it's some of my favorite Grateful Dead music ever. I mean, I can't wait to get it. So thanks again and we'll see you, um, what are we now? We'll see you in a, in a little bit with uh, maybe a month or two with another Dave's Picks video or maybe something, oh no, something else. Okay, bye.